friends, you know from the previous video that we booked a six-day vacation to Phuket after more than two years of absolutely zero overseas travel, no thanks to COVID. For the first part of our holiday in Phuket, we stayed at the Kasia Phuket and we really enjoyed our stay there. You can find out more by watching our video here. For the second part of our vacation in Phuket, we stayed at Four Points by Sheraton, a hotel that we think is potentially the best place that you can stay for your vacation in Phuket. Four Points by Sheraton is a four-star hotel located closer to the heart of Phuket, Patong Beach and Bangla Walking Street. It's near enough that you can actually walk there, it's only like 1.4 kilometers away or just under a mile, totally doable. But it's not so near that you need to worry about all the noise and the crowds and any potentially unsavory activities or people that you might come across, especially if you're with your kids. And one of the things I love about the hotel, other than its great location, is that it's relatively new. It was actually open only in late 2020. And you can really tell that it's new just looking at the hotel facade, the facilities like the swimming pool, the furnishings in the rooms, the in-house restaurants. They are all relatively modern and sleek. You know how with new cars, there's this new car smell? Well, with this hotel, it's almost a new hotel smell, if you will. Personally, I prefer to stay in newer hotels just because with older hotels, there's just so much history there. And as Barney Stinson says, New is always better. We booked a superior room with a king bed. We got a room with an inward facing view. But despite that, the view actually wasn't all too bad. And anyway, we spent most of our time outside the room. We love the room, especially the design and the furnishings. The style is very modern and minimalist, very much up our alley. Even the hotel bathroom is big and spacious, with plenty of space to move around. In some hotels, the shower cubicle can be really small and tight. The bed was very comfortable and not creaky at all. It barely made any sound or movement, even when we tossed and turned while we were sleeping. One thing to note is that the TV in the room doesn't come with any Netflix installed on it. So if you want to kick back on a movie or two before you sleep, best to bring a Chromecast or to cast the Netflix app on your mobile phone to the TV. Four Points by Sheraton has one of the best breakfast buffets that we have ever had. The breakfast buffet is in the in-house restaurant Chao Le. I'm probably butchering the name, it's a Thai name. Uh, but anyway, we really enjoyed the buffet. It is a wide selection of food and everything tastes good. You know how with some breakfast buffets, sometimes you feel like there's a lot of foods that are just meant to be fillers just to make it look like there's a wide variety of food but it doesn't actually taste good? Well, not with this one. Everything that we ate, and I think we tried nearly everything, everything tasted good. And it got to the point where we thought, you know what, let's just skip lunch. The food is so good, we're just going to eat to our heart's content and we're not going to eat anything for the rest of the day until dinner. That's how good it was. There's another restaurant called Sears & Co. Buy & Grill at Four Points by Sheraton. We actually had dinner there on our first night because we checked in pretty late and we didn't want to travel too far. Just wanted to have dinner and then rest in the hotel room. The ambience was great and the food was good too. We had a selection of local food like Pad Thai, Thai yellow curry and mango sticky rice. As well as international fare like tomahawk steak, calamari rings, french fries, chicken wings and so on. It's certainly a good option if you're not in the mood to travel far for food. The hotel has you well covered there. Now this may come as some surprise, but the pool at the Four Points by Sheraton is actually not as good as the one at Kasia Phuket. And why do we say that? I think there are a couple of things. First of all, the hotel has an infinity pool overlooking the beach and the ocean, but the view is partially obscured by this huge ass sign that really shouldn't be there. And secondly, the infinity pool overlooks a busy road. The ideal scenario is where you have nothing in between the pool and the view. So not too great in terms of view. The pool itself is pretty decent. There are deck chairs everywhere that you can lie down on and soak in the sun. And it was certainly helpful to have a pool bar, not something that was there at Kasia Phuket or maybe the one at Kasia Phuket was close, I don't know. So you can just lie down on the deck chair, soaking in the sun, sipping on your drink, having some snacks. That's pretty nice. And of course, the pool has a smaller area that they give it for kids. In our opinion, it was okay, but probably not as good as what Kasia Phuket offered, mainly because at Kasia there was a larger area for kids at the pool and there was a simulated beach for kids to play on. Because Four Points by Sheridan is closer to the heart of Phuket, there are a lot more people staying at the hotel, which means there were a lot more people at the pool, which made the overall experience a lot less tranquil and serene and quiet. I generally prefer to stay at a hotel with not that many people because when I go on a vacation, I want to get away from it all. But I'm probably in the minority here. In fact, you might not mind it as much. In fact, you might even think the more people, the merrier. In which case, this hotel is perfect for you. 
So it's four points by Sheraton, one of the best hotels, if not the best, to stay in Phuket, based on its proximity to Patong Beach, the spaciousness and decor of the rooms, and that amazing breakfast buffet, I'd say yes. I think it strikes a fine balance between catering to the two, I would say, main types of travelers to Phuket, the ones who are there to drink, have fun, and party all night long, as well as families who just want to chill with their children and have a peaceful and relaxing time. So next time you want a holiday in Phuket, definitely consider Four Points by Sheridan. So we reside in Singapore where the waves are pretty tame compared to the waves in Phuket. The waves in Phuket are something else entirely, and it's very dangerous to leave kids alone playing in the water, even if they're on the edge of the waves that are coming in because a huge wave could suddenly come in and just sweep your kid up. Highly recommend that if you're a family with children and you're at the beach in Phuket to make sure that you always have an eye on your kids. In fact, you should always make sure that you're next to your kids, especially if they're playing in the sand and the waves are coming in because you never know what could happen. For adults, it was kind of fun to kind of fight against the waves. Basically, you go as far out in the water as you can without having to tread water. Just make sure you're still standing and then you sort of break the waves as they come in. And uh, I wasn't the only one to do that. Actually, I kind of followed what other people were doing. They were all like standing out in the water and waiting for the waves to come in and just sort of breaking against them. Destruction! <laughs> I had a lot of fun breaking or fighting against the waves. Oh! Oh! And I certainly look forward to doing that again if I ever go to a place like that with waves like the ones in Phuket. When you go to Phuket, you can't not go to Batong Beach in Bangla Walking Street. It's kind of like a thing you have to do. It's just because that's where all the action is, where the hustle and bustle are. Even just to go there for a night and take a look-see and just soak in the atmosphere, that's good. Then you can say, I have been to Phuket. So that's exactly what we did. We were actually there on a weekday, I think it was a Wednesday or a Thursday, I can't remember. And there wasn't much of a crowd. But, you know, on Friday, we were there again. And this time, there was a lot of people, a lot of things going on. COVID has impacted nearly everyone across the world in the past two years. In particular, tourism would definitely have taken a big hit. So we were wondering how badly businesses in Patong were affected. But looking at the crowds, I think it's safe to say, Patong's back! One of the things that you absolutely have to do when you go to Phuket or Thailand for that matter is go for a massage. There are a lot of cheap and good massage places, so it would be a waste if you didn't go. Where else can you go to find a $20 massage? There are not a lot of places that offer cheaper massages that are just as good. So when you're in Phuket or Thailand, go get a massage. In fact, go get one every day. Fortunately for us, there were a couple of good massage places within walking distance of the hotel. Of course, we checked out online reviews before we went there because we want to make sure that they were legit. We found two that were pretty decent. One is Healthland and the other one is Your Massage. We've been to both. And in general, we prefer the service at Healthland. They're more professional. The experience at Your Massage wasn't as good as Healthland. The staff at Your Massage were giggling and talking to each other, even as they were giving us a foot massage, which kind of ruined the whole environment. So the prices between the two massage parlors are pretty similar. Between the two, I'd say definitely go for Healthland. You'll definitely enjoy the experience there. Other than the in-house restaurants at Four Points by Sheraton, we also dine at a few other places. The first is number 9 restaurant, which is just a 3-minute walk from Four Points by Sheraton. It offers tasty local food at reasonable prices. We found it to be very good value for money, but when you go there, just remember to bring some spare cash because when we were there, the credit card machine didn't work and we spent a lot of time trying to figure it out. In the end, we had to pay with cash and we almost didn't have enough on us, so bring cash. The next restaurant we went to is Savoy, located near Bangla Walking Street. In fact, it's just a few steps away from the entrance. The restaurant specializes in seafood. In general, we liked the food, but we found it to be a little bit pricey. In fact, almost same prices that we would get back home in Singapore. So dollar for dollar, number nine restaurant definitely offers better value. Now, Savoy gets really busy during peak dining hours, so be prepared to wait for a table and definitely wait for your food to get served. And if you don't want to wait, then better have your dinner earlier. The third restaurant that we thought was quite decent is Roma Ristorante in Pizzeria da Mauro Patong. 
I hope I pronounced that correctly. Anyway, at that point in our holiday, we had been having a few days of Thai food, so we wanted something different. While we were walking at Patong Beach, we spotted this restaurant, I googled it, it seemed okay based on what we could tell from the Google reviews. What's funny is that after we ate there, we looked at TripAdvisor and on TripAdvisor at least, the restaurant actually has mixed reviews. Some of the complaints revolved around customer service and the food quality. While we found that the staff weren't super friendly, we got what we wanted when we asked for it, so nothing to complain in terms of customer service, at least not for us. In terms of the food, we actually liked it. We thought it was pretty decent. Then again, we're not too fussy when it comes to food, so there you have it. Something else we did was to hire a driver for a day so we could visit a few places around Phuket. It cost about 1700 baht for 6 hours, or about 64 Singapore dollars. Our first stop was to Phuket Big Buddha, also known as the Great Buddha of Phuket. It has great views of the city and the coastline. There's not much to do there other than check out the statue and check out the view. But it's definitely still a place that you should go to, just because you don't get to see a giant Buddha statue every day. And the view of the city and the coastline were pretty great. After visiting Phuket Big Buddha, the next place we went to was Wat Chalong. Wat Chalong is a Buddhist temple built in 18. 37. It's located about 8km outside of Phuket Town and apparently it's the largest and most visited temple in Phuket. It's a beautiful and majestic temple and definitely a must visit place, especially for those of you who like to get a little culture. For our final stop, we went to Phuket City Viewpoint. It's situated atop Kaurang Hill. It offers a decent view of the city, although it wasn't as stunning as the one that we had at Big Buddha. It was still beautiful and certainly a great location for a night out with your other half. Up on the hill, there are three restaurants that you can choose from. There weren't really any restaurants that we noticed at Phuket Big Buddha, so if you want a night out with your other half or even just a meal with friends, Phuket City Viewpoint might be a better choice. Something that you need to know is there are a lot of monkeys roaming the grounds and our advice is don't feed the monkeys. You'll feed one and the rest will come. And in fact, if you're holding on to any food, just be sure you're not walking and holding the food by your side because you never know if a monkey could creep up behind you and just steal your food from you. 